Harry Potter. That's all that really needs to be said, actually. Despite not even being 28 years old, as of this review, that is, the Harry Potter franchise has become a worldwide phenomenon. We've all seen the movies, we've all read the books, or so we claim, and we've all seen how the author is trying to ruin the series on our Twitter. Why, Rowling? Why? I've always been a very big fan, especially lately where I've been starting to reread the books again. It's always great coming back to the world of Harry Potter. The great characters, the writing, the themes, everything about this series just fits so perfectly. For the most part, that is. There is still the cursed child, as much as we pretend it doesn't exist. But let's jump back to what I just mentioned. Themes. Harry Potter is full of them. Whether it be the power of love, sacrifice, the number seven, or the fact that there is no defense against the dark arts teacher who can last more than one year. Lord Voldemort, or as he was known at the time, Tom Riddle, applied for the job of Defense Against the Dark Arts Professor. However, he was turned down for being too young. So ten years later, and several horcruxes later, he came back, now with Albus Dumbledore as the headmaster. He applied again, and was rejected. It's said that Voldemort has cursed the position, as after his visit, they have not been able to hold down a professor for more than a year, no matter how good or how qualified they may be. So this creates a revolving door of interesting characters, each with their own teaching styles and personalities. And we're gonna rank them all here today. Which ones were the worst and which ones were the best? Disclaimer, this is all just my opinion and how I see things. I'm judging them purely off of their teaching values, not if they had a dark wizard on the back of their head or if they were an incompetent snob or if they were now or have ever been Umbridge. This is purely off of their teachings and the curriculum that they brought into Hogwarts. This information that I'm going to cite is going to come directly from both the books and Pottermore, the official Harry Potter website. As much as I love the movies, they're not canon. And they've got stuff like this. How did you put your name in the cover of the fire? So enough stalling. Let's get to the Defense Against the Dark Arts Professors. Worst to best. Also, quick side note, as I am editing this, I have found out that someone else has done a very similar video to this. Whoops. Alright, now we can begin. Amicus Carroll. I'll admit, I'm kind of cheating on this one. Amicus Carroll wasn't a defense against the Dark Arts Professor, he was just a Dark Arts Professor. After Voldemort took over the Ministry in the Deathly Hallows, Hogwarts was pretty much turned on its head. Snape became the Headmaster, and the Carroll siblings became the Deputy Headmasters, with Amicus getting the job of being the Dark Arts Professor. What is it? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's teaching the students of Hogwarts various kinds of dark magic like Fiendfire or the Three Unforgivable Curses. Exactly the opposite of what the post was supposed to do. It's said that his punishments were long and brutal, often resorting to whips, knives, or the Cruciatus Curse to get what he wants out of students who misbehave. He's at the bottom of this list because he's pure evil, teaching horrible things to the students in hopes that they become Death Eaters, and punishing anyone that stands in his way or objects to his methods. As a Death Eater, Caro sided himself with a man who was brutal, merciless, and evil to the core. Naturally, his class would be the pure embodiment of that. That's why he's the worst Defense Against the Dark Arts Professor, if you can even call him that. Gilderoy Lockhart. One of the bravest wizards in all of history, he defeated ghosts, banshees, and werewolves all without breaking his sweat, and all without losing his signature smile. His award-winning signature smile, that is. Except no, that's not true. Gilderoy Lockhart is a complete and total fraud. He takes credit for what others have done, and erases their memory to make sure that his tracks are covered. He's made a living off of deception and thievery, and at Hogwarts, it all came to a head. Given that he's inept in every single way, the only thing he's ever really done for the students is give them a disastrous run-in with some pixies. After that little fiasco, all his classes would really be were just him reenacting scenes from his book, sometimes even utilizing Harry as a prop. That's... it. That's all he could do. Lockhart doesn't know anything about magic. He turns bones to jelly and uses spells like PESKY PIXIE PASTANOMY! That. It's safe to say that in Harry's second year, Nobody really learned anything from Defense Against the Dark Arts class, except what not to be like, which apparently was Dumbledore's plan all along. 
Sneaky move, Albus. Dolores Umbridge. How is she not at the bottom, you ask? Yes, she's an absolutely horrible person. She, like Amicus Caro, tortures a bunch of students and does it all with that uncomfortably sweet smile and that sickening chuckle. <laughs> so, why is she the third from the bottom? Well, while Amicus Caro taught students horrible things and Gilderoy Lockhart taught them absolutely nothing, Dolores Umbridge at least taught them something. Even if it was completely theoretical and pretty much unable to be applied to the real world. Still, there were basic facts in there. There were still elements of truth in what she said. The facts she were giving students were not wrong, per se. They just weren't useful. I know that's definitely a bad way of teaching, but in my book, that's certainly better than being taught how to commit crimes or just wasting your time for about an hour. No, I don't condone what Umbridge has done at all. Absolutely not. I consider her almost as bad as Voldemort himself. But at least her teaching wasn't as bad as the previous two professors. Also, her tenure as professor at Hogwarts had one unintended little lesson that was taught. Harry learning leadership. When he formed Dumbledore's army to teach the students the things that Umbridge wouldn't teach them, he learned how to step up and become a leader. Sure, Harry was outspoken before and was able to lead a small group, and yeah, at first he got pushed into this, pretty much. This still really helped him come into his own. And this likely wouldn't have happened if there was any other defense against the Dark Arts Professor at the time. It was all on Umbridge. So yeah, as a person, pretty dang close to the worst. But as a teacher, not good at all, but not the absolute worst. I feel like I've made a lot of enemies with this entry. Oh well. On to the next one. Quirinus Quirrell. Harry's first defense against the Dark Arts teacher doesn't really get a lot of focus in the movies, so a lot of this information is coming from the books as Pottermore doesn't really go into details what to Quirrell's teaching style was like. It's described that a lot of his classes were just kind of a joke, mainly in part to Quirrell's stutter. Quirrell's nerves were immense. He was scared of the students, scared of the other staff, and was easily, well, scared. And that stutter constantly got in the way of what he taught. However, when we're judging by the content of what he taught, it wasn't all bad. Not great, but not bad. Like Umbridge, it was mostly a theoretical kind of knowledge. With that said though, he is teaching first year students. Naturally, first years would definitely have a little bit of a different curriculum, and certainly a lot less hands-on experience when it comes to their classes. You always gotta start small. And as far as we know, that could very well be what Quirrell was doing. But then again, we don't have full confirmation of that, and he very well could have just taught all of his classes like this. But that doesn't mean what he was teaching was bad. He was very knowledgeable. After all, that's why he went to Albania in the first place, to get some hands-on experience. Granted, he did get a little overconfident and thought he could have been the one to vanquish Lord Voldemort, and we all know how that happened. But still, he was clearly dedicated to his work. He was a very brilliant mind and taught some information that they could really use, like how to treat werewolf bites. Quirrell is definitely a safe choice. In his class, expect to learn a lot, just don't expect to do a whole lot. And don't ask him about the turban. He doesn't really like to talk about that. <laughs> Alistair Moody slash Barty Crouch Jr. The real Alistair Moody never got to teach at Hogwarts. That's because shortly before he was going to go there, he was ambushed by Death Eater Barty Crouch Jr. Crouch studied everything about Moody in order to fool everyone. He did this in order to get closer to Harry Potter, who was needed in order to bring Voldemort back. But of course, as the Triwizard Tournament was going on and that was integral to their plan, he still needed to pretend to be the Defense Against the Dark Arts Professor. And for what it's worth, he did a very good job. All of the students regarded him as very effective even if he was insane and secretly a Death Eater. Crouch Moody had a very, very hands-on approach, even resulting to using the unforgivable curses in a fourth-year class, when normally that's a sixth-year class. His belief that the students should be prepared for whatever's gonna come to them really shook some things up, and it made things very unpredictable. The guy he was pretending to be was a world-class Auror. He knows everything about the Dark Arts, but the guy he actually was was a practitioner of the Dark Arts, so naturally, he still would know a lot about that. 
Though one wonders why he taught Harry to resist the Imperious Curse, that... That wasn't the best move, Crouch. The downside to this, though, is that Alistair Moody slash Barty Crouch Jr. is... Unstable. From the moment he came into his class, he struck fear into all of the students. He's constantly on edge and constantly yelling and screaming. That, combined with his intimidating physique and known history of catching dark wizards and giving them brutal punishments, certainly gave him a reputation. But would the real Alistair Moody have taught like this? Yes, I believe so. Don't forget, he fooled everyone, including his longtime friend and world's smartest man, Albus Dumbledore. Strong and effective teacher, despite who he actually was. Just too bad all the students were completely terrified whenever they went into the class. Severus Snape In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Severus Snape finally gets what he always wanted, the defense against the Dark Arts position. Naturally, given his history as a practitioner in the Dark Arts, and also the Dark Arts that he's created with his Half-Blood Prince moniker, it's expected that he would excel at this. And he did. Not even just the obvious things like nonverbal magic, Snape was able to teach the students a lot of very helpful information when it comes to combating dark forces. Once again, he's extremely experienced. Not quite as experienced as Moody, but still, Snape's been around. We already knew his teaching style from when he was the potions master, of course. And it's no different in his defense against the dark arts classes. And on education level, it's on par with what Mad-Eye Moody taught, except without the constant fear and terror. And trauma. Snape probably didn't bring any of the trauma. He definitely had a lot more of a refined elegance to his teaching style than Moody did, and certainly a lot more professionalism. So because of that, he narrowly edges him out to get to the number two slot. Now the number one, we all knew this was coming. Just about every single person would agree that the number one defense against the dark arts teacher was... Remus Lupin. Lupin must have been a very refreshing bit of comfort for the students. The first defense against the dark arts teacher was average, but quite obnoxious with his stuttering. The second one was completely useless, so now they get someone who's not only had experience, but is a very, very good influence on the students. This time, it's all of Snape's knowledge, but with a very hospitable man. He encourages the students and is there for them and wants to help them out in their times of trouble, often treating them like his friends, kind of similar to how Dumbledore operates. He provides both the theoretical and the hands-on experience, even going out of his way to teach some struggling students, <coughs> Harry, some complex magic like the Patronus charm. Simply put, Lupin is all of the positive aspects of all the previous professors combined. He's charismatic, he's knowledgeable, and he provides a very good mix of teaching. And it's a good thing we saw more of him as the series went on, right up to his very end. So that is why Remus Lupin is the best Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher in the Harry Potter series. This list was a lot of fun to make. I've always wanted to do some kind of video where I talk about Harry Potter, and, well, this was my chance. Each of the characters is so complex and so well written that a whole book series could be written on any of these characters. Give or take a couple. And hey, they'd sell well. They've all got intricate backstories and complex character motivations. They would have been so much more welcome than other editions. <coughs> <laughs> and if you guys ever want to see me do more videos like this, feel free to comment below and let me know. Did you agree with my list? What did you think about the Defense Against the Dark Arts professors? Comment below and let me know. Alright, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now if you excuse me, I gotta go write some lines. I must not tell lies. I must not tell lies.